Hi, this is William Olson, writer, producer, director, editor of Getting It On. I've gotten my photo album off the shelf and lined up some things for us to look at today that should be fun. This is the uh, outline of the, that I wrote the script from, 55 scenes, and that's Amy McGarry. We started produce, pre-producing the film in my home for a couple of weeks before we moved to the production office. That's the real key to getting your money's worth on these films. You want to put the money on the screen. So we had $220,000 and we really wanted it to pay off. So we just pre-produce, pre-produce. Oh, extras. You know, now that doesn't look like a lot of people, but I got to tell you, my idea of the perfect film is my dinner with Andre. Two guys sitting at a table for the entire film. I don't like working with extras. One of the things I learned during pre-production of this film that I think is very important is the value of a casting director. And if you call someone in the business that's way up on the food chain, you might be surprised to find, even though it's your first feature, that they'll work with you on the casting. I called Donna DeSetta in New York and showed her a short film I'd made on Edgar Allan Poe and was really happy when she said she would cast this film. So the four leads came from New York and we had two or three days of um, auditions and I was very happy with uh, what we came up with. Oh my God, the phone's ringing. Troy, get the phone. Hello. Oh my God, Phil, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. You'll never guess. I'm doing the photo featurette for getting it on. You got a minute or two? I got a minute, yeah. Wow. Well, where are you? Well, I'm in Greensboro. I'm just leaving, uh, watching a movie here at the, the Grand Theater in Greensboro. North cool, Carolina. cool. Well, as everybody who's viewing the photo featurette knows, you're an associate producer. You probably hadn't thought about the film in a while, but uh, off the top of your head, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the movie experience, making getting it on? Well, uh, I remember a lot of things about getting it on because it was the first picture I, I ever had a producer type credit on. And that was, uh, what, back in 1982 when we shot that. What, September was that we started or September, October? Yeah. And uh, for me, it was a, a kind of a pivotal mark because I basically spent most of my time working camera and for get, getting it on really changed the, uh, well, helped me to go in the direction I really wanted to go in. In fact, I directed a couple pictures after that. and. Uh, now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in development on a picture for National Lampoon. You were really about the first person, especially in North Carolina, to go out on his own and actually, who, who didn't come from a great deal of money and had uh, a deep pocket somewhere. You actually went out, big part, and sold to raise the money to do the picture. It was kind of a, uh, it was kind, of, it was really a pioneering effort at that particular time. And, and back then, not many people knew how to make a movie, and also the film, you know, successfully did very well at the box office, which, uh, you know, in, in terms of the box office, you, you can add a, an inflation rate. It made uh, three or four times as much uh, as today's dollars would be if you inclu included inflation. Wow. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm really glad you called because all of these points you brought up, I didn't mention, and I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to go ahead with the rest of the uh, photo featurette. I'm going to call you. I got your cell phone. I'll call you when we're done. It's great. I'm glad you yeah. called. Well, I look forward to the DVD, Bill. All I'm, right. I'm, it's great. This picture's available again. Well, thanks. I, I'm really glad you called. Hey, good luck with your current film, Phil. Okay. Thank you. See you, man. Right. Bye-bye. Can you believe that Phil Smoot calls in the middle of the photo featurette? I'm glad I had the opportunity to put him through the phone patch. Uh, Mark Ferry, who became a Buddhist, he's in Tibet helping build houses now. Ram Ray, assistant cameraman, pretending to be asleep on one of our long night shoots, and me looking through the lens. I love the Aeroflex camera, it's just amazing. That still is torn and frayed because it was passed around to all the guys on the crew. It leaked out, it shouldn't have been shown like that, but this is the eight plate chem table that I edited on in my living room, which was wonderful. It's a great experience. When we took that 20-year-old print out of the vault, we color corrected it. One thing about editing on film, you really learned uh, quickly that um, you had to think through an edit because once you cut the film, certainly you could splice it back, but it was just more important. Uh, you knew you had to go through the trouble of putting the tape back. Um, so you really thought through the cut. Brian Elsom came in, did a little bit of editing for us. We shot about 60,000 feet of film. 
which is not a lot for a feature. You know, a finished movie is about 10 to 12,000 feet. So if you shoot 60,000 feet with all the runoff and the slates and everything, you've really only shot three to one or tight ratio like that. It's just important to have fun along the way. And um, I think it's important to celebrate every phase of making a film. It is so arduous and it's so labor intensive. I remember the day we got the money in the bank. I was exhausted. I thought, I am so tired. I don't know how I'm going to be able to make this movie since it took a year to raise the money. But all of a sudden, you get this burst of adrenaline and you wake up and you're ready to go and you have six or eight weeks of pre-production and then you're off and running. It was originally produced, we called it American Voyeur and when it was picked up for distribution it was renamed. And um, the business it did in the theater in town here was, was pretty, pretty good. We were very happy with it. It ran for three or four weeks. That was a shot from the premiere on the right is Worth Keeter, who's from North Carolina, an old friend. He's a director in Los Angeles. My Hawaiian shirt phase from one of the party pictures. This is the advertisement we created on the right when the film was originally titled American Voyeur. It ran in town here for four to five weeks and did some really good business and that's how it got picked up for distribution. We made our own flyers and sent them out to distributors. And that's really the name of the game now is self-promotion. I think it's great how the web has taken the place of so many things that we had to do. So much of filmmaking involves more than filmmaking. Self-promotion is a huge part. And you really don't think about it till you finish your film and you've got it sitting in front of you and you think, okay, now it's time to sell it. Uh, do you sell it? Well, not exactly. You make a deal, a pickup deal with a distributor. Um, hopefully you get an advance, but many distributors don't like to do that. And of course, the ones you read about in Entertainment Weekly, um, they all get big stiff advances and you read about Sundance and how a uh, $17,000 movie got bought for five million bucks. I had to adjust to the title. I didn't particularly like it at first. I preferred American Voyeur. I was kind of influenced by American Graffiti, George Lucas's film. And I thought kids would understand what a voyeur was, just tell them in the movie, but the distributor changed the title. I'm sort of used to it by now. This is in Los Angeles when it had double and triple bills. And I flew out for those uh, screenings or when it was playing in those theaters. This is very funny, I was walking down the street in Los Angeles and I saw this uh, sex newspaper and it had getting it on and um, so I turned to the inside and I see the synopsis for the film but none of the women shown were in the movie which I thought was hilarious so I had to pick this up and bring it home and put it in my photo album with all my other material. Sex screen. That was the uh, cover page to Film Journal which was kind of neat. They used that also for the ads, and you can see at the bottom where it opened and all those boroughs, and that was just New York. This is uh, Broadway in New York City. It uh, played on a double bill with Cujo and in about 15 or 16 other theaters in the metro New York um, and all the boroughs. I was very proud of that. We had a little New York premiere with all the actors and actresses. And um, that's standing out in front of the National Theater next to the one sheet and uh, it got a very good variety review. I think they understood what I was trying to do with the budget that I had and I think it was a very very fair and I was very happy with the review. Uh, there it is in the Village Voice next to Diva down there at the bottom left which has always been one of my favorite films. They don't do this anymore but you can see the little um, monitor there where they show clips out in front of the theater and you can uh, decide if you want to see the film by watching the clip which is, which is fun and this is a little grainy because it's out of a newspaper and of course we had to go see it in New York and see what the audience reaction was which was really fun um, that's the Variety Top 50 and you can tell that um, you can see where it hit number 17 for that week in uh, 1983. 
Well, that ends my photo album for getting it on. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much.